So guys, we were starting with, uh, we have started with a basic definition of scope. So before moving forward, I would uh, like to ask you, what is the difference between requirement and scope, guys? Scope is limited, like within that sprint or but requirements can be like, it, there's no limit, but you can, you can size it based on the sprint it goes to. So in general, right, though, let's not talk about sprints and agile in general. What is okay. the difference between requirement and scope? Now tell me one thing, do requirements represent stakeholder needs? Yes, requirements yes. And stakeholder stake. needs can be huge, expectations can be huge. Yes. Right? Now, projects are constrained by time and cost. Now within time, within the constraints of, of time and cost, can you, can you cater to all the requirements of the stakeholders? No. 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 Right? No. So, you know, scope contains those requirements that will be delivered by the project. In fact, scope creates a boundary. Right? For example, you know, stakeholder might be requiring hundred requirements, right? But project is constrained by time, by cost. So within that time and cost constraint, you might be able to deliver only 50 high priority requirements. So those 50 high priority requirements that you have to deliver as a part of project, right? It represents the scope of the project. Is it clear? Is the difference, difference between requirement and scope clear? Yeah. Right now, I'll take you through all the contents of the scope statement. The first one is product scope description, right? It is overall requirement, right? If you treat project as a product, the overall high level requirements of the project, right? Is product scope description, right? This section of the scope statement help you understand the basics about the product the, that the project is going to create. Right now, the second important element of scope statement is acceptance criteria. Now, what is acceptance criteria? Before getting into acceptance criteria, uh, you know, I would start with customer expectations. Now, guys, uh, do customers have expectations from the project? Yes. Yeah. For for example, if you are creating or launching a new model of a mobile phone, right? Customers might have expectations such as good performance, right? A good camera, right? A good storage capacity, right? Now, these are all expectations. Now, you know, can you, can you deliver the project precisely based on these expectations? Or these expectations should be first converted into a quantifiable or measurable criteria. For example, you know, uh, customer expectations were not quantifiable, right? The ones that I shared with you. But, you know, those expectations can be converted into measurable criteria. For example, if I say, a, a mobile phone, right? With a camera of this much, these, these specifications, like, you know, 50 megapixel plus, you know, I'll, other specs. If I say a mobile phone that is a storage capacity of 256 gigabytes, right? A mobile phone with a RAM of 16 megabytes, right? That can, uh, you know, uh, Okay. You can give me some examples. What else can be there as a measurable criteria for a mobile phone? Network connectivity, etc. You know, new things. Okay. Storage capacity. Or 
uh, you know, a mobile phone, a phone that can storage capacity, I've already said 256 gigabytes, right? Uh, for yeah, example, yeah. you know, a mobile phone that can support 5 GB, right? Or, uh, or 4G, right? 5G or 4G networks, right? What else? A good battery life. A very good battery backup. For example, a mobile phone with a battery backup of 48 hours, right? This can also be an acceptance criteria, right? So is the difference between customer expectations and the acceptance criteria clear? Sorry. Right? So when we convert, right, customer expectations into measurable attributes, it becomes an acceptance criteria. And it is a, it's a very important component, right? It's a very important element in a scope statement, right? A scope statement must contain the acceptance criteria. Is it fine? Yes. Is it yes. yes. Now, apart from this, you know, you can also put acceptance method and acceptance responsibility, though acceptance method and acceptance responsibility can be, uh, can be part of the scope management plan also, which is process for managing the scope, but you can put it here also, right, in the scope statement on what, what will be the method of acceptance and who will be given the responsibility for accepting the, the product, right? So acceptance method and acceptance responsibility is also a part of project scope statement, right? You can have it here, right, or you can have it in the scope management plan. Now, just, you know, just as at a project level, we have acceptance criteria, right? Uh, customer expectations, acceptance method. Yeah, Ashwini, you were saying something. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so you were suggesting that acceptance criteria and acceptance method and acceptance responsibility. No, 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 no. I, I didn't say this. I said acceptance criteria is must to be in the project scope statement, right? I only talk said acceptance method and acceptance responsibility can be part of scope management plan also, right? Scope management plan okay. is that helps. Okay, so criteria can only be part of statement, but not the others. It's just no, I'm saying it, you can put it or you cannot put it. It's up to you. There is oh. no, right? So this can be optional also. If you remove it and you put it in your scope management plan, it's absolutely fine. Uh, the criteria you are talking about, acceptance criteria, right? No. It can be part. Okay. Acceptance, acceptance. acceptance criteria is must to be in the scope statement. Okay. A scope statement is incomplete when acceptance criteria is not there. Right, Ashwini? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The, the, third, the third element is acceptance method and acceptance responsibility. It may or may not be there. It's okay. If it is not here, but it should, then it should be there in the scope management plan. Okay. Right. okay. But again, acceptance criteria is a must to be thing, right? In project scope statement. Is that okay? Yes. Right. Now, now within project there will be multiple deliverables, right? If you if you see a mobile phone. It has multiple deliverables like camera is there, right? Battery is there, right? The body, right? The chases, right? So any any project will have multiple deliverables, right? Now, as a part of scope statement, you will be describing every deliverable in details because see this scope statement will create a boundary, right? Within which you have to deliver the project. So every deliverable that is to be included in the project will be described in details. I have shown deliverables here, right? But it should be deliverable one, right? Deliverable one and corresponding to that deliverable one, you should be writing the description, the quality criteria, the quality method on the basis of which it will be approved or rejected and who will produce it, who will review it and who will approve. It means who will approve that particular deliverable. Right. So this will be for all the deliverables. Because within a project scope, there will be multiple deliverables. For every deliverable, you will be clearly writing the description, the quality criteria, right, on the basis of 
or the measurable criteria on the basis of which the deliverable will be accepted or rejected, the quality method for acceptance of the deliverable and who will produce it, who will review it and who will approve it. Now tell me one thing, if, if at a project level, you have a clearly defined acceptance criteria, acceptance method and acceptance responsibility. And at deliverable level, you have, for every deliverable, you have clearly defined quality criteria, quality method, along with who will produce it, who will review it, and who will approve it, right? Will this prevent you from incorrectly scoping the project or not? Tell me, with all these things, the chances that there would be any ambiguity regarding the scope will be minimum or not? Yes or no? What yes. do you think? Yes. Or what do you think? Now, can you see the next item, which is project exclusion? Right? Project exclusion is out of scope activities. Whatever is not in the scope of the project. So tell me, will it be beneficial if we put project exclusion Right or those or whatever is not within the scope of the project in the scope statement. At times, it will be good if uh, you know the customer is so demanding, so we can just make it our scope very clear initially that what actually is to be delivered and what should not be. See, uh, you know, sometimes what happens, I'll tell you. See, sometimes, uh, some, this is a very, very common thing. You know, sometimes there might be ambiguity, right? Some ambiguity might be left, right? Regarding the scope of the project. For example, uh, you know, customer may think that it is within the scope. And, you know, uh, you may think that, you know, it is not in the scope of the project. This can happen, right? Despite your best effort as well, right? So, you know, does, does it happen or not that, you know, customer says it's a missing element, right? Or a bug. And you say it's a change request. Does this kind of conflict happen between customer and the, and the team or not? Yes. Right. Now I, I'll take, I'll, I'll take a very simple example here, which will explain you why, why putting project exclusion is important. You know, suppose guys, I am a, I am a owner of a hospital, right? I am a owner of a hospital. I am a customer, and Saurabh, Saurabh is uh, from a supplier's company, and Saurabh is, right? And Saurabh is, uh, you know, uh, delivering a project uh, to create a hospital management system for me. Is the project clear? You know. I am the owner of a hospital who is a customer and Saurabh is developing a hospital management system for me. Right, Saurabh? Sure. Saurabh, Saurabh, uh, Saurabh completed... There's a background noise, guys. Please take care of it. Right? Now, Saurabh completed the application, hospital management system. Right? The features were... Features have gone through the acceptance also. All the features are working very well. All the deliverables are performing very well. Now, Saurabh asked me for a final payment. As per Saurabh, the project is complete, completed and he asked for the final payment, right? Now, I said, you know, you know, you are not done with the project, right? You are still left with the project. There are a lot, lot of things still left. Saurabh asked me, you know, no, we have completed everything. And, you know, I said, still so many things are left. For it. Then I gave you example. I said, you know, see, there's a huge data of hospital that you need to migrate into the new software, the new application. Now tell me, is data migration a simple task? It's a project in itself. 
data migration is a project in itself right whether it has it is to whether a manual whether they were, might be see whether i am holding data in a manual system right from manual system to the new system if i have to transfer or you know if it's an old system and i have have a new system done by sora even any in any case the database structures and everything are different right so database you know data migration is a project in itself but tell me can you know customer is non technical customer doesn't understand i am non technical i don't understand how difficult it is to migrate the data from one system to another so to avoid such kind of ambiguity if saurav had written in the project exclusion statement that data migration will not be in the scope of the project right if the customer requires data migration activity to be done then it should be taken as a separate project now tell me if such statement is clearly written in the project exclusion will it help or not what do you think saurav it definitely helps right so wherever you feel that there can be an ambiguity between you and the customer right you can always put that in the exclusion so that right you know right in the beginning when you sign up the scope it can be taken care of right is it fine now the last element of scope statement right constraints and assumptions right now guys tell me what is the difference between constraint and an assumption what is a constraint and what is an assumption can anyone try what is the difference between constraint and an assumption guys a constraint maybe here we are referring to some uh, uh, like uh, limitation or absolutely. something absolutely the moment you said constraint it's a limitation right for example if i say the performance the performance of this application can be maximum this much right for example the response time can be maximum this much for these many concurrent users is it a constraint based on the hardware that we have based on the infrastructure that we have the maximum performance of this system can be this much is it a limitation or not yes tell me guys yes or no yes the maximum data that the system can hold is this much is it a constraint or not yes it is right now uh, if i if i say that okay this version of a software or you know my product only my product is only suitable for mid size companies right suppose i am building an hr product right my my product is only uh, applicable or viable for mid size or small companies and i define mid size as i say you know companies with 1500 employees or less right it is not uh, it is not viable for those companies that have employees more than 1500 right so is it a constraint or limitation or not mm, yes it is so these are all constraints right so consider there are any constraints in your system please specify it here right now what are assumptions guys what are assumptions please let me believe hmm. what are the scope we are uh, you know defining while you know, at the starting to, for the project whatever we have you know uh you can say the the guidelines or the scopes what we are defining that is assumption for no, the particular see, project no, no, no. see uh, that see again the scope is defined right the scope mm. is whatever work you have to do in the project right scope defines whatever work you have to do in the project right mm. now 
you know, assumptions means something that you believe would be true. Mm -hmm. Right? Something that you believe would be true. Is it an assumption or not? Okay. For example, the licenses for all the tools required for development would be supplied by the customer. Mm. Right? Or the or the cost for the licenses and the tools to be used will be provided by the customer. Is it an assumption? Yes. All the user interface guidance, right? All or all the user interface or UI related guidelines will be provided by the customer. Is it an assumption or not? Mm. Yes. Right. Adequate hardware and software or adequate infrastructure would be available, right? It's an assumption, right? Yes or no? <clears throat> yes, it is. Right. Customer would be available on regular basis, right? To clarify any doubts related to requirements or acceptance criteria. Is it an assumption or not? Mm -hmm. Right? So assumption should be mentioned, right? When you mention assumption in the scope statement, right? You know, you take care of any invalid assumption also because see, any invalid assumption by the delivery team can be source of risk. Yes or no? Now, so by putting all the assumptions that you think, right? In the scope statement and getting it validated by customer also, right? In this way, you get your assumptions also validated. Yes or no? What do you think? What do you think, Akansha? Not still clear with the assumption thing. I'm See, trying to understand. Okay. When you when you start a pro when you when you start a project, right? Or you know when you see this. Project scope is the work to be done in the project. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Now to do that work, you assume that few things are available to you, right? Uh, at the customer ends or at the uh, the person who would be working for the project. See, this is for you. See, okay. when you, right? See, for example, you know all the user interface guidelines. Suppose you assume that you know UI related guidelines will be provided by the customer. Is it an okay. assumption or not? Yes. This is, but you know, unless, but again, you know, customer might not have said this. You're assuming it, right? Yes. So, so put it under assumption and get it validated. So when it goes to, when customer reviews it, he might say that, you know, UI user interface is also your area. I'll not be providing anything so that, you know, that before you sign up the scope, right? Before you agree on a scope, you have a clarity on what to be done. Okay. Right. Okay. For example, you know, your delivery team will have license. We will need licenses of the tools to be used. Right. So, you know, if you feel that customer will provide those licenses, it mention it here. So whatever you assume, whatever, whatever you think, right, will be there. For example, if you feel that infrastructure will be provided by customer, right? Put it in a, see again, you know, at the most, what will happen? Some of the assumptions will be incorrect. Right, yes. Akansha? So it's yes. better that, you know, at this stage, if you'll come to know that those assumptions are incorrect. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. So these are the elements in a scope statement, the product scope description, the acceptance criteria, right? Accepts acceptance method and responsibilities, all the deliverables along with description, quality criteria, quality method, producer, reviewer, and approver, project exclusions, constraints, and assumptions. Now, if you have any questions about this, please ask me. Uh, yes. Yeah, Shoni, please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, thanks. Sir, all this comes under statement. Right. Scope statement. Right. Right. See again, scope Sorry. statement is a general word. You can also see many times it is being referred to as a statement of work also, SOW also. Yeah, SOW, right? Yeah. 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 But uh... you know, I showed you a sample illustration, right? You mm -hmm. can add more 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 elements as you know, if you think it, it provides more clarity. Yeah. Your question is. 
so uh, my question is like the uh, project scope statements is discussed with the customer at the beginning of the project all these points are covered in one go or over the time period uh, like the project exclusion constraint and assumptions are discussed yeah, like yeah, how we'll, we'll discuss about it see okay. you know it depends it depends see you know every every project start, starts in a different manner yes right yes. for example if you know for example if it's a customer initiated project right suppose customer is planning to launch a new model of a car okay right? Now, customer is creating their scope statement. See, again, you know, as I told you, projects are done in a customer and a supplier environment. Right? Yes. If yes. customer initiates something like this, right? Now, customer has to go through vision, then high levels require scope. Then over the period of time, this kind of scope statement will be developed. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Right now, so where does supplier comes into picture regarding this scope statement? Right, because you know most of you guys are from companies like Accenture, have a background of Accenture or Infosys or HCL or Tech Mahindra. These are all consulting companies, right? So where is the consulting company coming into picture? Right. So mm -hmm. can, can I can you know just to answer your question. Can I, you know, assume that, you know, let's say we are launching a new model of a car and we are not Accenture or HCL or Tech Mahindra, yeah. right? Or okay. Infosys. We are a company like Maruti, Suzuki or Honda cars. Okay. Right. Can we assume that, guys? Yeah. Yes. Just to understand this, right? Now, see, suppose this is a scope statement of Maruti, right? And Maruti will reach this scope statement after multiple steps. Right? Is that okay? Right. And you know, Maruti will not be Maruti will not be giving this, this scope statement, right? Uh, to a customer like Accenture generally, in general, right? See, there will be multiple steps involved. So the first step is we will be decomposing this whole scope. Right, hierarchically, right, will will we'll decompose this whole scope into a hierarchical structure. Right, we'll do a hierarchical decompose. Decompose. Sorry, we'll do the hierarchical decomposition of the overall scope of the project. Right, into a in in, in this form, into a work breakdown structure. This is called as work breakdown structure. Can you see this structure, guys? Yes. Can you see? Right. This is a hierarchical decomposition of overall scope of the project. Right. For example, suppose this is Honda, right? Cars or Maruti. They have to launch a new model of a car. Right. So a car can be decomposed into a hierarchical structure like this. For example, it can include entertainment and guidance, engine, transmission, and suspension body and you know, they can be further decomposed. Are you okay with this structure first of all? The overall scope has been decomposed into more manageable units, right? Is that okay? Yeah, Akansha, is, is, is this structure yes. okay? Yes. Who is doing I this? Who is doing this? Them. Who is doing this? Uh, the people who will handle the project? No. But Customer. Who, who, how? Yes, people who are hand, who will handle the project from but from supplier's end or customer's end? Uh, customer's end. Customer's end. And you know, supplier are not involved so far. Okay. Right? So customer is doing his own groundwork, right? Okay. Right? Now, in this hierarchical structure, Right in every node, the lowest level is called as work package. Right. For example, if you see this level, in this level or this node, this is the lowest level, lowest component, entertainment and guidance. This is a work package. If I follow this this node, right, 
this node, this node. These three are the lowest components. These are work packages, right? If I go like this, right? These are the work packages. Is that okay? Work package means so I didn't get that. Because work package is a abhi customer ki baat ho rahi hai. We are talking about customer akansha, right? Oh, correct. Now, yes. Now, Work package is the lowest level deliverable in a work breakdown structure. See, this type of diagram, this type of hierarchical structure, can I call it as a work breakdown structure? Okay. Right. This is called as work breakdown structure. Right, Saurabh? Gyanesh, this is a work yeah. breakdown structure, right? Now, in this yeah, work yeah. breakdown structure, what are the lowest com components in every node? These are different nodes, right? One, two, three. In this node, what is the lowest level structure? Entertainment and guidance itself, right? Yes. Yes. I follow this and this node, right? What is the lowest structure? Active suspension, these right? Mm. Right? These three are the lowest level. These are work packages. Mm. So lowest component in the work breakdown structure is what? Work packages. Work packages. Yeah. Or can I say the lowest unit of work is a work package? Mm. A work package is like a unit of work, right? Is that okay, Akansha? Yes. Now, Ashwini, is this clear? The concept of work breakdown structure and work package? Yes, sir. But um, I have a question. Can't we do this at like, like based on my experience, we also do this, right? Don't do, don't, don't compare this with the sprint user story decomposing into tasks. No, 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 no. Don't, don't well, compare this with this. Huh? No, no, no. But when we... Like in consulting companies, we also do. No, we'll do. No, no, we'll do. But we'll do at a different level. I'm not saying I... that you know, a supplier will also do it. For ah, example, okay. let yeah. me give the whole thing first, right? Now, mm -hmm. can you see this different? See, tell me, will Maruti or Honda be doing all the components on their own? No. They, will, they won't be doing all the components on their own, right? Yes or no? Suppose, yeah. can you see this computer component? 2.2.3? Yeah. This is a work package? Yeah. Now, Maruti, suppose, or Honda, which, whichever is customer, suppose this hmm. computer component is an AI component, AI software to be developed. Okay. Yeah. Now, they decided, see, we are a car company, right? So, we should outsource this component to some IT services company like you know mm -hmm. Accenture or Tech Mahindra or Infosys. Right? Yeah. If Honda cars decide this, what is the first document they will create? They will create the WBS on their end. No, 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 no. They will Our create based for proposal. RFP. RFP. RFP, right? They will create a RFP. And within RFP, they will have a description of this component. Right? Oh, yes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this RFP will be given to shortlisted selected vendors like Tech Mahindra, right? Or TCS or Infosys, right? Or Accenture. Now, after receiving RFP, these people will be sub submitting proposals. Yes or no? Yeah, yes. so they, they and one of them, let's say, let's say Accenture gets selected, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me, you know, for, for Maruti or Honda cars, this was a work package. But for Accenture, is it a work package or a project? It's a project. 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 For them, it's a project. Are you getting my point or not? Pankaj, sir, one question here. Like the work uh, package gets changed like once the industry gets changed like like right now we are talking about something uh, which is into the car manufacturer or the two two wheeler uh, manufacturer so uh, once like we'll switch to some like pharmaceutical industry or a chemical industry something like that so okay, the yeah. work package will get changed see every project has a work breakdown structure so work package is the lowest level in the scope okay so it's nothing, you know, see every project will have forget about the industry for 
for every project it will be different tell me if let's say i am building an airport if i am building an airport will the work breakdown structure be same as this or different 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 right now tell me to suppose suppose you know accenture gets selected for accenture this is a project yes or no yeah yes sir right. sir i have a question i mean it could be yeah. it could be i don't know if it is going with it but we also pro, like when there is a bidding we also provide a rfp right and so this is and the one which customer gives that is also called as rfp rfs request for solution you provide no 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 tell me rfp no no do, do, no no you pro, you provide rfp to whom like we provide a response to the rfp yeah so response to the rfp is called as proposal yeah so you give and... a proposal in return of this right yeah yeah so when see this is a honda cars honda cars has given rfp to multiple play players accenture infosys right. and each of them will be submitting their proposals yeah and yeah. one of them will be selected let's say yeah so accenture is let's say selected right and for accenture this is a project is it clear or not yeah yeah that that part is clear so yeah all right okay. uh, you don't my... see again rfp See, suppose Accenture decided to outsource their project to some other small company, so Accenture will also get RFP if required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 But again, for you know, as a supplier, Accenture is need to submit a proposal, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that okay? I, yeah, yeah. I heard someone was saying RFS solution. Yeah. So we call it something else when we respond to it. Yeah. When, no, no. When you respond to it, it should. It is called as proposal. Right? Okay, just proposal. Okay. Yeah, proposal. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay, guys? Because propo we'll discuss about this in details in procurement. Proposal can propo proposal also contain detailed solution, right? Now, so you know this is a AI component, right? Now. Accenture may decide how to deliver it and they might use Agile for it, right? They might create a product backlog for this work package and deliver it based on Agile, right? Yes or no? And, you know, some, and similarly, you know, Honda cars might outsource this entertainment and, guide, and guidance to a company like, let's say, Sony or some, some other company, right? Right? Yes. So this is, a work, this, this is a work package for Honda cars. But for those, that company who is doing the, the, the work, this will be a project. Project, And, you know, entertainment and guidance may not be required, may, may not be using, may not require agile. So they might use, you know, uh, a predictive approach for development, right? Or incremental approach for developing, right? Are, are you getting my point or not? So I'm also trying to indicate that how hybrid environment comes into picture, right? Hybrid environment means, environment means in the same project, right? Some components are being done in agile and some are done in predictive or incremental mode. Is that okay? Is that okay, guys? Yes. Right? Now. I will be out for next, uh, next I mean, 10 minutes from 5.30 to 5.40 or 4.55. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Any questions here, guys? No. No. Now, just like, you know, uh, see, uh, see, this work breakdown structure is simply a hierarchical decomposition, right? It doesn't describe anything, right? Now, to describe every, see, there are multiple work packages in this uh, work breakdown structure. Now, if we describe oh, each and every work package in the work breakdown structure, does it mean that I have described the work breakdown structure completely? If I describe all the work packages, right, all the work packages, 
right? In the work breakdown structure. Is it equivalent to describing the whole work breakdown structure, guys? Yes. No. Yes, obviously. But what did I miss? But like these are... Sorry, Ashwani, go ahead. Uh, no, no, you, you carry on. I was about to say because these are in the broader sense, but once it would no. be converted into the project, then more no. detailed work would be required. No. Uh, no, listen, listen carefully. Yes, see, it depends, right? So, see, in a way, I have see, I'm what I'm trying to say. You are right. I what I'm trying to say is, if I have described every work package, that means I have de described the work breakdown structure, right? In basic, I have described each and every component. Ever, I, I have a component description also available, right? Whether it requires further refinement or not, it depends on customer supply for and and the project, right? Yes. So what I'm trying to my, what I'm trying to say is, right, the description of every work package within the work breakdown structure is given in a document called as work breakdown structure dictionary, right? And a dictionary is like this. For every work package in a work breakdown structure, the customer will maintain a dictionary like this. This will be for every work package. Now, does it look like a scope statement or not? Yes. A uh, smaller version, yeah. Yeah. So for every component, for every work package, there will be a dictionary like this, right? Who will maintain this customer? Now, for customer, it's a dictionary. For customer, it's a dictionary. But for supplier, is it not a statement of work? For their project? Yes. Right? For example, for example, Infosys is doing computer, right? Let's say it's an AI component. And this computer will also have a WBS dictionary like this, right? Customer might maintain it as a WBS dictionary, but for but for supplier, is it not a scope, a statement of work, SOW? Yes or no? Yes. See, what I'm trying to say here is, you know, I'm trying to explain you customer and supplier context in a project environment. Right? Customer and supplier context in a project environment. Right? See, you know, a supplier is coming into picture at this point, right? Whereas customer has started the project way before, right? For example, you know, for customer, it's a huge investment. So, you know, they will create the business case, they will create a charter, then a huge project management plan, right? By the time they reach here. Can we call WBS dictionary as like a contract uh, paper or something? Yeah, for or... a small, yeah for a small pro for a small project, right? See, many times we we treat SOW also as a contract. Okay. Yes or no? I'm not like, really sure because this is something... sometimes sometimes we, sometimes we use SOW contract okay. for whom. This is uh, for suppliers. For suppliers. For supplier, yes. We can use we can use it as a sub, as a contract for suppliers, yes. Okay. And, and one more thing, like uh, first time I've heard this term like RFP and RFI. Ah, so okay, can you just help me to understand okay. See, both the whenever terms? whenever something has to be outsourced by a customer, right? Okay. Now see, I'll though you know, Akansha, I'll take a detailed session on this. On you know, okay. in the detail session in procurement, but still I'm explaining you now also so that we have some clarity. See, suppose you know, see when your customers, when the customers they want to outsource something to suppliers, right? When they want want to outsource projects to suppliers, right? So they give you a request for proposal. Okay. The point is yes. right? In the request for proposal, for example. This SOW will also be given. Okay. Now, 
the supplier will be sub will be responding to this request for proposal right by sending a proposal now this proposal will contain their approach their understanding right and the pricing for the project okay right and you know often a customer sends RFA to multiple suppliers, so they, you know, for that's why you know you might have seen that companies like Infosys, right, Tech Mahindra, uh, TCS, they competing with this for the same project, right? Yes. One of them wins the bid, right? Right. So you know these all these companies will submit proposal. The proposal will be evaluated by the customer, and whosoever customer consider best will be awarded the contract, right? Is it fine? Yes, not now, but clear about it. Yeah, but again, you know, we'll discuss this in details, right? We'll discuss different type of contracts, right? The content of RFP, RFQ. There are other documents also related to bid, right? Our request for court, request for information. We'll discuss all of that in procurement. Yeah. Now, so, you know, is it clear what is WBS dictionary and why you can call it as a mini, mini statement of work in the context of the big project and it's a statement of work for a customer, for a supplier, sorry. Is it clear? Yeah. Right. Because see, when you have to imagine, visualize about the whole big project, you have to think from customer and supplier both perspective, right? So can I say, you know, in a project like a huge big project like this, where you have to launch a new model of a car, you know, you might require a hybrid approach to develop. Some some components can be done in agile, some can be done in non-agile mode. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, uh, yes. Can... Now, another important thing, you know, there is a rule called as 100% rule, which is often used when we talk about WBS, 100% rule. Right? What does it mean when you say 100% rule, guys? See, 100% rule means whatever is there in the WBS is only in the scope of the project. Anything beyond WBS will not be included in the scope of the project. Is that okay? Whatever is there in the WBS will be in the scope of the project. Anything outside WBS will not be in the scope of the project. Is it fine? Yes. Yeah. Right. And there are some other terms that I'll also uh, describe. One is a planning package. Can you see planning package here? Now see. Planning package has no relationship with this level. What is a planning package actually? Now see, in tell me, you know, when you get a work breakdown structure, is it guaranteed? Because see, I, I told you in the first class, in the beginning of the class, beginning, that projects are progressively elaborated. So in a big, huge work breakdown structure, will every component be having a very clear-cut dictionary right in the beginning or you know there might be some components where you don't have a we, we, about which you know at high level but you are not in a position of creating a, dis, a dictionary the way I showed you. There can be some components about which you don't still you know that these components have to be there in the overall scope but you don't have clarity about those. Can there be some components in the work breakdown structure about which some more clarity is required? Yes, definitely. It would be a there, can be, there can be, right? And that means, you know, the work, the, the dictionary for this component will be, will be refined as you move forward, right? As you get more clarity. Yes. Right? Such components are called as planning packages, right? Such components are called as planning packages. Is that okay? 
So can you give an example? I'm not quite clear. See, you know, when you do a huge, big, uh, you know, uh, project, right? Mm -hmm. Suppose you're building an airport. I'm just showing you one example. Suppose you're building a new airport, right? And, you know, airport will have various infrastructural components, right? It will have a multi-level parking. It will have runways, right? Uh, it will have, you know, the shopping area and multiple things, right? Plus, it will have sophisticated IT components also, right? Now, suppose, you know, one of the IT component is CRM, right? Mm -hmm. That's the management software, CRM, right? Now, you know that there would be a CRM and it, it is somewhere here, let's say, a CRM to be developed, right? Suppose here, a CRM to be developed, right? But you are still not clear whether you are going to use Salesforce and implement or whether you are going to use Lead Square or whether you are going to use Sales Boom, right? Or you are going to use Microsoft CRM or you are going to develop your own. Can this be a situation or not? Yes. Right? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. over the period of time, you will, you will get more clarity. But at a given point, yeah. it might be possible yeah. some components are not very well defined. Right? Such components yeah. are planning packages. Right? So as we move forward, as we get more and more clarity about them, we refine the WBS dictionary as well. Okay. Yeah. Got so, it. Yeah. Is the concept clear? Yeah. 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 So the supplier or the vendor who would be working on it eventually would be adding those uh, things in WBS. No, 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 no. Why they? Why see this whole scope has been defined by customer, right? Yes. See, you know, Airport Authority of India. Let's say, right. They mm -hmm. have their, suppose this is a scope of all, let's say, you know, forget about it. Let's talk about this car, right? Okay. This car may have some, you know, automated braking system, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now, automated braking system can be implement, implemented using multiple technologies. Yes. Now, you know that there should be an automated braking system, but you don't know which technology to use right now. Right, you are still that. That is still a question mark. This is question mm -hmm. mark today, but will it remain question mark tomorrow? No. No, right? And you know, generally, till the time it is question mark, you know, probably you will not be outsourcing it. So you will okay. get more clarity on it, right? As you move forward, as you move forward, you will get more clarity on it, and you will refine the dictionary. That's it. Okay. See, you know. In a customer-initiated project, right, you know, you will not have clarity about everything, every component right from the first day. Does it make sense, Akansha? Uh, yeah. Yes. So are you getting what is planning package? Yes. Right. So again, I'm not saying that in every project there will be planning packages at every at any point of time. Right. They may or may not be there depending on the situation, right? Aryan, are you okay with planning packages? Yes, Aryan, yes. Ganesh, yeah. Mohit, Mohit, are you okay with planning yes, packages? I am good. Right? Yes, Mohit, sir. Mohit, you do a lot of mechanical related projects. So yes, yes. Planning packages. That all example is related to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can relate to it, right? Yes, yes, easily, sir. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> we have discussed about work packages. We have discussed about planning packages. Now, another uh, thing to discuss is control account. Right? Now, see, can you see every component? Can you see every component in the WBS has a separate account, a code of, you know, identifier? You can identify each component in WS with a, with a unique number. Can you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is called as code of account identifier, right? Now, what is a control account? Now, control account is related to, is more relevant for your financial accounting division. Right? Now, 
does your accounting division capture expenses related to your project as a separate head or not? See, there are various expenses in the project, like salary of the people, right? Plus, there can be expenses in the infrastructure. Are they recorded somewhere? Yes, by the finance team. Record the finance, right? they, they record, right? They record it. Now, see, at what see at what at what granular level right till what granularity they should track the expenses it all depends right based on the situation right and based based on at what granular at what granularity level they want to track it for example they can create a account a, an a, a control account at new car level let's say it's 1.0 and they can capture all the expenses here, right? They can track everything at, at this level. Or they can also do like this. They can create, you know, an, a, a control account at new car level and they can also create control account at these levels, entertainment and guidance, engine, transmission and suspension and body. And they can capture each expenses at these individual levels also. Now tell me which is more granular way of tracking the expenses? Tracking each section individually. See, it depends. Yeah, it depends on, right? It depends on the situation that the, the how big the project is, right? And the intent of your financial accounting team at what granularity they want to track the expenses, right? So yeah. you know. So each control account is like a separate cost head or a cost center, right? There is no hard and fast tool for it, right? You can have multiple control accounts. For example, you can have it, you know, here, 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 and you know, you can have it at a lower level also, right? But the primary purpose of control account is to track expenses related to the project, right? At a particular cost head level, right? So, is it clear what is control account, guys? If you have any questions, please ask me. Any questions, guys? So, in case if the uh, if the finance team come across that uh, the the project is uh, over budgeted or, or something is missing, so uh, do they directly let customer know about it or like how is it managed? See, you know whether the project is. Uh over budget right see they can give you mis the decision is yours okay. and you can get data from them but project manager is the person who has to track cost and schedule performance okay right for example whatever you have spent so far in the project right who can give you this data uh like in terms Amount of finance data. yeah accounts and finance will give you this data right Yes, yes. So, so they, they, they can only provide you the data, right? Now, with that data, which is called as actual cost, right? You can calculate various uh, parameters such as, you know, cost performance index, schedule performance index, cost variance, schedule variance that we are going to do in subsequent classes, right? Shortly, very shortly, right? And based on that, you have to, you have to manage the project, right? Okay, got it. So any, any question? Now, guys, can can I say one thing? You know, for a for a for a top level, for a top level company like New Car, what is a for a top?
Guys, just just two minutes, right? So guys, you know, if for this for this player who is at the top, right, the new the new car, or you know, it can be Honda cars or Maruti cars, you know, if I say uh, the scope baseline, the scope baseline includes scope statement plus work breakdown structure plus work breakdown structure dictionary. Will that be okay? Will that be the right scope baseline? Um, sir, can you repeat? I yeah. don't. You know, I'm just, I'm just copy. See, for for the top level company in the work break in the work breakdown structure, can I say scope baseline includes detailed scope statement, work breakdown structure, and its associated dictionary? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. So what do you think? Uh, huh, perfect, Ishwani. So Aryan, do you agree with this or not? Aryan, are you there? Yeah, Akansha, Gyanesh, Mohit, are you okay with this? For this? Yes. Yes. Sir. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> so this is a scope baseline, right? Now, what is the benefit of a scope baseline? What is the benefit of a scope baseline, guys? To give a better understanding about the project, where where we are standing, what are the requirements, what would be the scope in future, um, how the finance has to be managed. Okay. Plus, does it help you to prevent uncontrolled changes? Uh, possibly. Because over the time, we'll be coming to know whether the changes are required or how it could be dealt. See, it help, it helps you to control the scope, guys. Right? It helps you to control the scope, right? When I say control the scope, you know, it prevents you uh, from scope creep primarily, right? Now, what is a scope creep, guys? What is a scope creep? Unwanted changes or uh, extra additional changes suddenly in between. Uncontrolled changes, right? Now, what are, you know... Change... Um, if we are oh, building yeah, a uncontrolled change, yeah, can you hear me? Ah, uh, sure, 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 sure. I was just saying, if we are building a login, and then in the middle they say, okay, let's add uh, a social sign up as well. Okay, yes, and okay. Now, see, uh, as Aryan gave you an example that you know you are built uh, in a project, you were told initially to build a basic login right and somewhere in the middle right uh, the customer says you know they they want integration with uh, you know google also and the and the social and professional and you know they want integration of that login uh, with you know facebook also and linkedin also let's say right this is what you are saying rn right yeah absolutely yeah yeah now see if you know sometimes sometimes you know Aryan, you know, suppose Aryan is a delivery guy, right? A team lead or a delivery manager. In order to please, right? In order to please the customer, if Aryan develops it, right? Tell me, will it be an uncontrolled change or not? Yes. Right? This is also called as gold plating. Yeah. Right? This is uncontrolled change. But however, if customer gives you this additional task, you, to, you, you, you know, Aryan says, great, but you know, first I'll assess it, right? And a change request will be created. If the change control board approves it, right? See if Aryan says, you know, I'll create a change request. I'll I'll assess how much it how how much will be the impact on the time and cost, 
right? Uh, I'll create a change request with detailed impact analysis and my change control board will assess the change and based on that, they will either approve or reject. If they approve the change, right, I'll update the plan, right, which means time and cost and then deliver it. If Aryan behaves like this, will it be a controlled change or uncontrolled change? Control change. That is a control change, right? See, okay, customer is saying something which is which may be a, a demand of the market now, right? That you know they should be able to use their social uh, or professional networking login to log into your website, right? But you know, any such change, any such delta, any such addition should go through proper change control process. Right? Then it becomes control change. And control scope is to prevent any kind of uncontrolled change from happening. Are you getting this, Ashwani and Akansha? Ashwani and Akansha, are you getting it? Yes. Right. Yes, now, sir. Yeah, now and Tell me, if there is any uncontrolled change, is it identifiable through through negative variants? For example, you know, any uncontrolled change will have a negative impact on what all? Time and cost. Time and cost will be adversely impacted. Yes or no? Yes. Right, for example, my schedule variance. will be negative. My cost variance will be negative. My cost will overshoot the budget. Yes or no? Yes. But is it fine? Is it fine, guys? Yes. Right. So this is about, right, uh, Control scope, right? Primary purpose is to prevent scope creep or uncontrolled changes. Now, there is another important uh, process or activity that we are going to learn here, which is called as validate scope. Right? Now, what is validate scope? Right? In PMI, what is a validate scope? What is a validate scope, guys? See, Validate scope means formal acceptance of the deliverables of the project. Formal acceptance of the deliverables of the project. Now, can I call this as a user acceptance testing? Can I call it as a user acceptance testing, guys? Mm, yes. Right. Uh, yeah. with just a quick question. UAT happens after something has been delivered, right? Yes, yes. Yes. So validate validation of scope will that not happen before Sir, some hum sequence of nahi kar rahe. Hum topic ki baat kar rahe. Jab Achha, sare deliverables ban jayenge, uske baad pehle internal testing hogi. Right. Dekho, process kya hogi? Process, let me show you the process. See, you know, first you will create deliverables. Yeah. Right? Yes or no? Yeah. Based on the scope, this is how the process will work. Yes. To define scope. Then you create deliverables. Right? Then what you will do? You will do internal testing. It is called as control quality. Right? Yes. And after the in, uh, control quality is complete, you will do validate scope. Which is formal acceptance of the deliverables of the project. Right? Okay. In front of key stakeholders. Right? Now, in agile environment, what do you call validate scope as? What is what is it analogous to? When the project is for uh, yeah. 
you you will think no in agile you call it as a sprint review sprint review so okay okay right sprint reviews are to validate the scope right yes, yes or no yeah janesh what do you think janesh are you okay i think janesh is janesh are you there Yeah, Pankaj, I'm here, sir. <laughs> no, I'm okay. So, is it clear what is validate scope? Formal acceptance of the deliverable of the project, right? Is validate scope. Right? Now, you know, I would like, there is a question that comes in, uh, in exam also. And it is practically also, uh, you know, practically also I have seen a problem in many of the companies. Right? Now, there is a concept called as enterprise environmental factors, right? And, you know, uh, I just want to explain you that the, the whole con concept in, in, in terms of, you know, how it can impact the work breakdown structure. I'm just going to see, there is something called as enterprise environmental factors. Now, guys, enterprise environmental factors are the factors external to the project, but can impact the project performance. Can there be some factors external to the project that can impact the project performance? Tell me, guys, can there be some factors which are external to the project, but can impact the project performance? Yes, yes. Yes. So can you give me some examples? Um, uh, resignations, maybe, or no, government no. approval. No. See, fact, see, I'm saying factors external to the project, they may or they can be external to the organization, or they can be within organization but external to the project, right? So, as Mohit said, government regulations, right? Can they impact the project? Yeah, yes. Now yes. we have you have a work breakdown structure in front of you. Can government regulation impact the work breakdown structure? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. For example, see, generally when you build a new model of a car, is there any scope of work or any component which is not highlighted here? There will be a, some unit of work that you need to do to fulfill the government compliances. Hmm. Right? See, a car has to fulfill various norms or not? Yes. Various regulatory norms, right? Related to pollution and all. Hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Right? Related to some safety standards also. Right? So, hmm. you know, principally, if you create a real time work breakdown structure, will you be putting some additional, uh, you know, component for that, in, uh, that government related work or not? Because whatever work you are going to do in a project should be part of work breakdown structure. Should it be? Should there be a separate component or not? At the first year itself. Right. Yes. Why? Because you know there, like there will be a effort consumed in that. There will be a cost com consumed in that also. See, this is something that you know many times people miss. Right. For example, if I'm building a school, right now in building a school or, or a college or a hospital, is there a separate component for approvals and fulfillment of compl government compliance or not? Yes. Or fulfillment of Should they be taken as a part of work breakdown structure or not? Mm. Yes or no? Yes. Mm. They should be taken as a part of work breakdown structure, right? Right. Is it fine? 
So now we were discussing about enterprise environmental factors. So there are factors external to the project, right? Or external to the organization which can impact the project performance. So regulatory measures or legal requirements are one thing. Now, apart from that, market conditions, right? Demand and supply, right? The infrastructure of the organization, the skill level of the people within the organization can also impact the performance of the project, right? Such factors which are external to the project but can impact the project performance, right? Is, inter is called as enterprise environmental factors, right? Now tell me, you know, I'll give you, I said skill level of the people within the organization, right? Now, if you are, if your project requires a skill which is not available within the organization, right? Now, then will the training will be required or not? Yes. Will there be extra cost? So, or then there will be extra effort, right? That extra effort should also come as a component of the work breakdown structure, right? Yes. So is it fine? Yes, yes. Now, can we can we practice some questions on scope management, guys? Yeah, please. Sir, usually how much weight is weightage comes for this scope management? See, uh, frankly speaking, since the paper is centered around Agile, so, you know, you can see one or two questions around work breakdown structure, right, Ashwini? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you can see some questions around uncontrolled changes or scope creep, that's it. Okay. That's it. So, Pankaj, in, in that uh, Moodle.com, the one scope management is there, that is based on Agile. No, there are two. There are two scope management. That's why. Achha. So see, this one was agile, and one is this. Okay. See, agile will be all product backlog, right? Mm. Right, user stories, right? Mm. Prioritization, mm. right? That is agile work, and this is non-agile work. So both are there. Yeah, maybe just after that, just help. Me. Me to find out this term, the the one that you are uh, teaching yeah. us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which of the following? Can you see my screen, guys? Yes. Right. Now, which of the following is true about a work breakdown structure? Option C. Option B. Charlie. No, no, what is true? Uh, Charlie is correct. Charlie is correct. Mohit, you know, uh, each yes. item in WBS represent a feature in the product. See, again, WBS is related to project scope, not product scope. Okay. Right? WBS is a project scope, not product scope, right? Product scope is more like requirements, right? But they, I told you that there is a 100% rule that exists. The WBS represent all the work that must be done, right? Now, yes. alpha is correct, you know, it's a hierarchical structure, not linear, right? So can I can cancel alpha, right? So B is also rejected as I told you and D, the WBS is created by product sponsor. So tell me, who will create WBS? The team will create WBS. 
right? Who will create WBS, guys? The team will create it. The team will create WBS, right? It's, it's, is it okay? Yes. Now, which, which is not an output of a scope management process. Now, again, you know, we don't use business case here, but this is an obsolete question though, right? I mean, there is, you know, business case is not there in scope management, right? Yeah, that's it. Now, which of the following is not true about a work breakdown structure? Answer carefully. Option B. Option A. Alpha. Ha, dekho. It B. is a, dekho, B is true. Uh, you know, Akansha, it is not true. Not true. Okay, not true. This is true, right? Yes, yes. Bravo yes. is true. It contains a graphical hierarchical list, yes, of a bird. Charlie, it can be broken down by project phases. That's true. It is an important element of the baseline, as I told you, right? It was a part of yeah. scope baseline. Yes. But the, it doesn't describe procedure, right? See, scope management plan is a document that describes the procedure to manage scope. That is, right? So this is not WBS, right? So A alpha, right? Now, answer fifth carefully. You are managing a software project. Your team has been working for eight weeks and so far the project is on track. The lead programmer comes to you with a problem. There is a work package that is causing trouble. Nobody seems to know who is responsible for it. The accounting department does not know what cost center to bill it against and it's not even clear exactly what work should be performed. Which of the following would best help this in this situation? Option B. WWS. WBS dictionary, will it help or not? Tell me guys, in this case, WBS dictionary will help because it has all the details about the work package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So should it be Bravo? Yes. Right, because see, corresponding to a work package, all the details are present in the dictionary, right? Now, the goal of validate scope. Now, see, in, in the context of PMP exam, whenever you see validate scope, it means user acceptance testing. Answer carefully. Sixth question. B for Bravo. Option B. So do you all agree B, Bravo? Yes. Right? Yes. Now, now, see, I'll explain you one thing, you know. Uh, I think you should be able to answer it, but still we'll discuss, right? First, I'll give a, give you an opportunity, right? We'll, again, anyway, we'll discuss it as well. Historical information and lesson learned are part of Alpha. Option A. Say that again. Alpha. Alpha. Option A. B A. for B. Uh, alpha. Alpha. Right. So, so you know, for alpha. Something, yeah. I need, I need to define what is an organizational process asset. Right. See, you know, organizational process asset is a complete knowledge base of an organization. Right. All the historical data. All the lesson learned documents from the past project, right? All the processes, procedures, right, are stored in organizational process asset, right? So if you want to refer to any historical data or lesson learned or any knowledge related to organization, you can refer to organizational process asset. Is that okay? Is that okay, guys? 
we call it in it is a knowledge base uh, kbs or see you know for need... example you have a sharepoint system in your organization right mm -hmm. yes. okay so in sharepoint you have all the historical data lesson learned everything mm -hmm. okay that is the organization best, best practices asset. and all yes best practices right standards guidelines procedure policies right everything so that is called as organizational process assets right mm -hmm. Fine. Uh, um, one question here, like if we we'll consider it in the broader term, we can also see the, uh, we can also uh, go with an option B as well, enterprise environmental no, factors. No, no, no. No. No? Enterprise environmental factors are factors. Is it a system or a factor? Factor. It's a factor. It's not, it does, they go, you know, uh, for, for example, political environment, is it a factor? Or factor, an asset. Yeah. It's a factor. factor. So that's yes. why those, right? These are factors, right? Right? For example, culture is bad. Is it an asset or a factor? Factor. Culture is too good, right? Conducive. A factor, right? Yes. Right? Market okay. environment is turbulent. A factor, right? Yes. Can you control, you know, enterprise environmental factors? are there, right? You can manage. Yes. Right? You can minimize the impact. Right? They can be source of risk. Right? Yes. But you can manage. You have full control on your OPS. You can have a structured OPS. Do you have control on this OPS? Uh, yes. You can. See, this yes. is how you, you structure your SharePoint, right? Yes. So that it is easily accessible. You keep it secured also, right? Okay. But do you have any control on this? No. They will happen, no. but the only thing is through through risk responses, you can manage them, right? Yes. Yes. Or no? yes. Okay. Now, try question number eight yourself. Charlie, Charlie. So this is what? Charlie? Yeah. So are you all okay with Charlie for this? So what do you think? What should be the answer? Charlie or something else? I go with Charlie. Charlie, right? All will go. Anybody who doesn't want to go with Charlie. Yeah, okay. Right, Charlie? Standard care process is being... Can be option B, sir. Look, option B will be rude. Right? Now, option C doesn't mean that you are, you are saying... See, option C means that you are saying, oh, for example, you know, your sponsor is... So you can say, great, you know, great. And then, you know, you will say that, you know, yes, definitely we should... We should think positively about your uh, plan, but again, let's let's use a change control system, right? So that we are fully safe. That is option C, right? Yes, yes. But you know, B is means you are you know you are not even listening to him. You know, you are simply saying no because he might come with a very valuable suggestion, right? But whether whatever suggestion is giving is valuable or not, it will be after evaluation of the change request, right? Yeah. Is this, this is the only option which can document the things. Other than that, there is no option we in A, B, or D, which which is actually documenting the thing. Once the change will be made, it means it has been documented somewhere that this change was proposed, and then it bases on that this you know twelve inches thickness pipe will be laid. Yeah. Yes, like yes, that. yes. Is that okay? Is that okay, guys? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Right now, see, I am leaving requirement traceability matrix. See, I'll be sharing a video with you on requirement collection processes and requirement traceability matrix. Right? Then, in the next class, which will be day after tomorrow, if possible, if you are okay, not tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we can discuss this question 
right? The ninth one, because I want to spend some more time on requirement collection process and traceability matrix, right? Requirement, see requirement collection or elicitation or gathering processes are the processes which are done before you come out with a scope statement, right? Before the customer comes out with a scope statement, they have to generate requirements, right? Now, what are the techniques? There are multiple techniques like document analysis, right? Surveys, right? We can also use mind maps, right? Prototyping, right? So I'll share a video with you, right? Which is a class recording only, right? So in the, that video, we have this defined requirement, elicitation and traceability matrix. So you go through it first, right? Then we'll discuss traceability matrix in the subsequent class, in the next class, right? So I'm leaving 10th, 9th question as of now. I'll share that the link of the video on the group, right? It's there on the Moodles also. Now 10th, what is the answer of 10th? It's the end of execution for large highway construction project. The work has been done and the workers are ready to pack up their equipment. The project manager and the project sponsor have come by with specialist to check that each requirement has been met and that all the work is the w, uh, in the WBS has been performed. What process is being done? B. Validated scope. Yeah, validated scope. Validate. Perfect. Fourteenth is a good question, right? Try fourteen. You are a project manager on a software project. Your team has only completed half of the work. When the sponsor informs you that project has been terminated, what is the best action for you to take? Charlie? See, Charlie is not possible now. Okay. Project has been already terminated. Then, mm -hmm. uh, see, you know, uh, a pro now listen to me. I, I'm explaining what PMI thinks about closure, right? See, a project can be closed as planned, right? Or a project can be closed prematurely. Whatever is the case, you have to do a formal closure process. Alpha, 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 alpha. See, we won't you create a a report, performance report, a final report. Oh, Should so the create? deliverables means the report over here. Okay. Yeah. So verify that. See, because you will check. See, because see, this is a project which has been uh, terminated prematurely. Right? Yes. <laughs> Now, yes. in case of premature closure, will you determine? Will you not determine the extent of completion? Yes. Right. So, A is determining the extent of completion. Verify the deliverables produced by the team against scope and document any place they do not match. Right? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, is, fifteen. Is and the document, any place that do, like why this has been like mentioned, like once the, uh, we are talking about the termination of the project. I mean, Look, project customer has terminated. But you know, mm -hmm. Akansha, is it not your responsibility to share with them what you have actually completed in the project? What about in the a form money? Of document? Yes, okay. see, because there will be money pending, right? You, see, yes. if you have done some work, you have to raise invoices also for that. Yes, yes. Right? Okay. If you have okay. taken extra money, you have to return that as well, right? Yes. So whether you have to return or you don't take money from the customer, right? You will only come to know by doing A. Okay. See, you know, whether it's a premature closure or a planned closure after completion of scope or premature closure in the middle. So, you know, you, you have to clearly close the project, right? 
neatly, clearly, right? Close the project. Yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes. Now, fifteenth is a good question. You should try it yourself. You are managing an industrial design project, right? One of your team members comes to you with a suggestion that will let you do more work while at the same time saving the project fifteen percent of the budget. What is the best way for you to proceed? Bravo. D. Absolutely. देखो इसमें पता है सौरभ सब गलती से डी कर देते हैं देखो डी में क्या गलती है बी कर सी बी वेन्यू से चेंज रिक्वेस्ट चेंज रिक्वेस्ट विल हैव एंटायर इंपैक्ट एनालिसिस सी चेंज रिक्वेस्ट विल डू कॉस्ट बेनिफिट एनालिसिस आल्सो बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम कॉस्ट बेनिफिट एनालिसिस यू हैव टू सी हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू इम्पैक्ट द टाइम राइट हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू इम्पैक्ट द टेक्निकल परफॉर्मेंस how it is going to impact the other requirements right so when i do b d is already included d is subset of b delta okay. is a subset of b so that's why bravo refuse to make the change until the change request is documented because in change see tell me in a change request document won't you do cost benefit analysis in the change request document you will do cost benefit analysis plus other things also how it is going to impact technically how it is going to impact other requirements and so on so forth yeah i agreed so that's why this is a tricky question actually mm -hmm. agreed dekho ek cheez yaad rakhna dusra abhi main aapko jo video dunga traceability matrix ka wo bahut dhyan se sunna uska reason kya traceability matrix is not only important from the perspective of pmi i am telling you see uh, in There is a IIBA Canada's BA course. एक business analysis के जितने भी exam होते हैं, whether it's IIBA, CBAP, or a PMI PBA, you know you will get at least ten questions on traceability matrix. Right? Yes or no? Yes. So yes. That's why that. So I'll share some videos with you. Right? So please go through them. Right? We'll discuss about traceability matrix in the next class. Right? Along with the questions. Hmm. Right. You are a project manager for a telecommunication project. You are working on a project scope statement. Which of the following is not included in this document? Ah. See, B is included. C is included. D author authorization of project manager to work on the project is not included in the scope statement. it is included in project charter right right so a is incorrect rest of them are correct right mm, yes okay right? and again 19th is also a very good question right such questions come in the exam as well or not direct question but you know a similar concept you are project manager for a new project and you want to save time creating the wbs which is the best way to do this answer carefully d option d uh, bravo bravo b okay. ऑप्शन डी देखो मैं आपको बताता हूं सी क्या होता है कि सी प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट इज मोर अबाउट रिसर्च रादर देन इन्वेंशन राइट सो इट इज ऑलवेज इंपॉर्टेंट टू रीयूज एज मच एज पॉसिबल ओके इफ यू हैव डन पास सिमिलर प्रोजेक्ट रीयूज द टेम्पलेट सी स्मार्ट कॉपी पेस्टिंग इज अ प्रेफर्ड option rather than invention research is in better as compared to invention right you can't invent everything in a project right so why not to take a a charter from the previous project if it is the same project you have done this kind of project before right and use it as a template hmm so sow ke bhi to template hi bane hote hain template use karo sab do see that's why they say do smart copy pasting 
Yeah. Use as much as possible. Why, but why I think here there is no such word which we can interpret that maybe at a similar project or the same technology. Oh, here, 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 similar here, 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 Offices to harbor wo WBS thodi banata hai har hmm. project ke na. They can pick a WBS from some past project and start modifying it. Yes right. or no? Yes. Agreed. 